Search is on for a new top cop in Patterson, one of New Jersey's largest cities, which, like everywhere else, has seen an increase in crime over the last two years. So the Patterson police chief fired earlier this week, just days after filing a lawsuit against the city. Joining us this morning is Patterson Mayor Andre Sayed to explain how it all went down. Mr. Mayor, good to see you again. Thanks for being here. Good morning and good to see you again as well. So, Mr. Mayor, let's begin with this because you held the press conference on Tuesday, right, to announce that you were actually terminating Police Chief Ibrahim uh, Bekora, but you had already been in talks with him to retire. So, what changed in that timeline? That's true. Back in February of this year, I met face to face with the police chief and let him know I had no faith in his leadership and it was time to go. He proceeded to hire an attorney. We negotiated a separation agreement. He actually was ready to sign and then at the very last minute, inexplicably and dishonorably, walked away from a separation deal that he agreed to. And that reveals a great deal about his character. And during his past campaign, I just was reelected in May, many, many residents said, we want a new chief. And quite frankly, I'm giving them exactly what they've asked for. Mm. They're going to be getting a new chief. So where does that lawsuit stand, then, the wrongful termination lawsuit? Actually, I, w I wasn't even served the day that I made this announcement. And he's just making claims, and I will just best characterize this lawsuit as frivolous. But the, f the facts speak for themselves. I mean, you just showed an image of him falling asleep at, a sw at my swearing-in ceremony, and he's been known to fall asleep at cabinet meetings. How can you fall asleep at the wheel, especially when you have a city that's just combating crime and we grapple yeah. with public safety issues every day and here he is falling asleep at meetings and quite frankly not proactive not having a vision and i gotta i have to elaborate a little further we have a table of organization that calls for 439 officers we are fighting to get to 439 we're barely at 400. just recently 300 police officers left us to go to another municipality who, which is too, it, it's far from Patterson. He had the temerity to go to the swearing in ceremony and not just attend, but he swore in former Patterson police officers to the North Arlington Police Department. Mm. That's a slap in the face. And it shows so very, very now that he's, judgment. So now that he's been fired, right, and there is this, this lawsuit, does he collect a severance? Does he get a package? Does he get his pension? Taxpayer dollars are at, to, at, at stake here. He, he's going to have to fight for his pension. I'm not really concerned about his financial situation. I'm concerned about Patterson's fin financial situation. We're a poor city, and we cannot afford to reward poor performance. He right, was that's why epitome. I was asking if he gets money. Yeah, yeah. He he is the epitome of incompetence. And I don't. There's no, think about it. It's been a few days since I announced that he was being terminated. Mm -hmm. No one's rushed to his defense. Mm -hmm. Mm, interesting. Well, with everything happening, plus, like you said, the low, low number of uh, officers in the department, morale must be pretty low. So have you started to search for the replacement? Are you looking to hire from within? You're absolutely right about morale. It's at an all-time low. I speak to the rank and file on a regular basis. We have named an acting police chief, and there will be a search process. I'll be interviewing individuals. What makes things interesting is that Patterson finally got it right in the census last year. We're now a first-class city, according to New Jersey law. Any city above 150,000, and we were hovering around 147,000, is a class one city and gives the mayor more flexibility with the police chief, which means I can hire almost anyone, but I won't do that. It's going to be someone highly qualified, proactive, and can stay awake. Well, yeah, and so you have that acting person who is going to be taking over right now. Your public safety director says the city won't miss a beat. You're talking about a shortage, right? So there's this big parade on Sunday in Patterson that's taking place. How are you managing that? Dominican parade, yeah, we, we've, we've met. We have a game plan. We're properly prepared. And we're going to have a banner of a day on Sunday with the Dominican parade. OK. So I want to switch gears a little bit. Uh, the city of Patterson also has a lot to celebrate. We've got that professional baseball making a comeback and making some history. Uh, but also, at the same time, there's a little bit of controversy, from what I understand. Some of the schools, not sure about what's going to happen to them getting access to the stadium. Hinchliffe. So that's right. We, are, we announced yesterday that the New Jersey Jackals relocated from Yogi Berra Stadium in Little Falls to Patterson to Hinchliffe Stadium, which we're bringing it back after it's been 
fallow for 25 years. And this is a historic stadium because it's mm -hmm. one of only two ballparks still standing in this country that hosted Negro League games. The yeah. other is Birmingham, Alabama, Rickwood Field. So Hinchliffe Stadium means a lot here. It's New Jersey's field of dreams. And we have high hopes for it. Yes, there's some concerns on the part of some school board members, but it isn't anything that can't be sorted out considering the New Jersey Jackals schedule doesn't necessarily impede the school district schedule as far as games are concerned. And quite frankly, outside of Hinchliffe Stadium, which is almost a $90 million investment, yeah. we've invested $20 million in our parks and fields so there will be other fields available for athletic activities in Patterson. Right. So just, just to be clear, there's an article that came out that said that the leaders of the stadium's renovation have their own priorities. They do not include the interests of students and families we serve. I'm hearing what you're saying, right? And so, yes, it's great that there are those parks, but some of those students want to play on that historic field as well, right? There's something to be said about playing in that stadium. So will, are you saying that they will have access fully to playing games and practices at that stadium as well? Yes, they will. There's an agreement that states that the school district will have 180 days. So that's essentially the school year. And then the balance of it will be for, let's say, the New Jersey Jackals, if we are able to secure a professional soccer team, which is what we're working mm -hmm. on as well. And then we'll have concerts, right. comedy shows, maybe WWE wrestling, sky's the limit. Unfortunately, that stadium was not utilized for over two decades. And now we're going to be swinging for the fences. Well, it's a great opportunity for everyone. Mayor Andresea, thank you again for being with us this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity.